everybody, Mike McWilliams, Upstairs to Write Music. Uh, before we get started today, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, our record label, Upstairs to Write Music, has released an album with our band Asanoki called Ants in the Pantry. Uh, it is exclusively to be found on Bandcamp. And if you'd like to show your support for this channel, uh, I'd like to really request that you hit the link down in the description below. Uh, go to Bandcamp and support us by buying a copy of this album. Uh, it's a mix of rock, funk, and psychedelic pop, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. So please, uh, if you like this channel, if you like this content, and so you want to keep it going, uh, show your support uh, by going uh, down into the description, hitting that link, going over to Bandcamp, and buying uh, Asanoki's new album, Ants in the Pantry. I thank you so much. I've said it before that uh, a guitar is the sum of its parts, most important parts being its pickups. But I really haven't gotten to another aspect of the guitar that I think is equally important, and that is your string selection. So let's take a minute today, a brief moment, and uh, let's talk about strings. This will be information that will be good for the beginner to the advanced person. And I'll give you my take on what strings I use and uh, a little bit of a history behind uh, strings as I was growing up as a musician in the late 1970s and through the 80s until now. In the 1970s and really through the mid 80s, uh, the common thoughts regarding string uh, uh, for your electric guitar is the lighter gauge the better. Uh, I do believe this is a carryover from a lot of the blues players uh, from the 60s, 50s and 60s, particularly B.B. Uh, King, who once remarked when somebody was astonished that he used a set of sevens, uh, he said, why would you want to work so hard? So I think as a result of, of that uh, influence uh, going into the British rockers and of course their influence uh, going into the 70s, I think that with most guitarists at that time that the idea was you want to have a light gauge of string. Now, there is all kinds of strings out there on the market to be had. And it is really incumbent upon you to discover what strings are the best for you. Uh, you may find that a mass-produced string uh, like these DRs here are perfect for you and you can buy them right off the rack and um, slap them on and they are the perfect thing for you. Uh, there are some people who think that custom sets are the better way to go. I'm that way because I have specific needs uh, that I found over the years. Uh, in terms of what I think is a good set of guitar strings on my guitars. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But getting back to those really heady days of the 70s and 80s in the guitar market, uh, wasn't a lot of choices. Um, Ernie Ball Super Slinkies were the king of guitar strings when I was growing up. I can speak from personal experience that every single guitar player that I dealt with when I was a teenager, we all used Ernie Ball Super Slinkies. Now this is a set of eights. Uh, it goes from eight to 38. Um, imagine again, B.B. King was playing sevens, uh, which are such a light gauge that he had to wear a strap to keep his guitar from flying away. <laughs> Joking. But seriously, uh, seven is way too light and you lose a couple of things. Uh, a lot of guitar players uh, began to experiment and they began to discover that uh, there was a lot more sustain to be had when you picked up a gauge of strings, for example, like these 11 through 50s. This is a set that Prince played. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan started out on 13s. He eventually <laughs> worked his way down to 11s. So I would say that it's generally accepted uh, that 11 gauge strings are going to give you a lot of sustain. Now the trade-off of course is being that it's a lot tougher to play a set of 11s as opposed to playing a set of 8s. Uh, I again think that the uh, prominent thinking of again the late 70s and the mid 80s regarding uh, super slinkies light strings came from a tradition of the bluesmen uh, and then that going through the British rockers and then the British invasion uh, coming over to here. It wasn't until the mid 80s when Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble, uh, when Prince was on the rise, when a lot of guitarists uh, started uh, switching uh, over from their super slinkies over to uh, a heavier set. Uh, in general, I'm speaking. Of course, there's individuals out there who were either one of these all along. Uh, neither one of these really appealed to me. I am, I am 
intrigued by the sustain that you can get out of this set of 11s. Uh, I am really of the mindset that eight is far, far too light of a gauge for my style of playing. So I fall somewhere in between. Now, uh, these days, uh, when you receive a guitar from most manufacturers, most of them will string the guitar at the factory with a set of tens. Tens seems to be that fine middle ground between uh, the elevens and the eights for something that they can ship out. And believe me, the quality of those strings aren't the best. You'd be doing yourself a favor by swapping out those strings the minute that you receive that guitar with something substantial, something a little bit better, because they really don't use the best materials with those strings. They're cheap. However, 10 gauge seems to be the factory default these days when you receive a guitar uh, from a guitar shop or in the mail. Uh, these are actually ultra light nines. So you can buy nines anywhere between nine and uh, 48, 50, or you can find um, them between nine and 40 on average. Uh, that's when we start getting into your personal preference. What you feel is good for you. Uh, I found that I like a lighter set of guitar strings, uh, like nines for example, but I do like some aspects of tens. So I actually uh, have created a custom set of strings through a company called Newton Electrics. Uh, Newton Strings. So I actually have been ordering a custom set of strings for myself that fits my needs that I found over the years that works best with my playing through a company called Newton Strings. They're out of the UK in Derbyshire. Uh, they will custom make any string uh, set that you would like. Uh, they even get into particulars whether you want a nickel plated steel, whether you want the core to be uh, round or a hex. Uh, wow, that's some technical stuff that uh, I don't want to get into today. Just suffice to say that uh, they were able to create a set of nines uh, for me that started out like a regular set of nines, uh, go to an 11, then they jump to a 16 on the third string. Uh, the fourth string is a 28, the fifth is a 38, and the sixth is a 48. This is the magical sauce, if you will, has been put to me recently, uh, for what makes uh, my guitar tone, I think, what it is. Uh, it took me years uh, of experimenting with different gauges. Before, you know, you'd have to buy a couple of sets of 9 and 10, 11 gauge slinkies or even 8s and mix them together in order to get the outcome that you can get now just by ordering a few simple clicks online. Uh, not a sponsor of this uh, show at all, but I've been using them for over a decade now. These are the only strings that I use on any of my electric guitars are the Newton strings. Again, uh, starting with a 9, going to an 11, then a 16, uh, a 28, a 38, and a 48. That's a, actually a, a, a pretty odd arrangement when mostly uh, when you would buy a set of, um, of nines, you would get a nine, a 12, a 15, a 22, a 30, and a 40. Well, this is a little bit on the light side, uh, but it, you can see that this gets heavier as uh, we go up. So that's what works for me, and that's what I have on all of my guitars are strung with these Newton strings uh, going from the nines and working them with their way up to a healthy set of tens. It, it happens somewhere here around the third string. And that's uh, been my secret sauce uh, for my personal needs. Now, you don't uh, have to do that. Again, Newton strings aren't that pricey either. Uh, these are comparable to what you would pay for these excluding the shipping. So something to think about. Uh, again, I'll put the link to the company down in the description for Newton Strings. But off-the-shelf stuff is just fine. Uh, at the end of the day, you're really going to have to experiment uh, and talk to your fellow guitarists and, you know, see what they're playing. Uh, this Newton set of strings, I found that I can slap this set, this custom set that I've devised on any guitar uh, and it will sound fantastic and the playability will be very comfortable for me. So there's a couple of routes you can go there. You can go off the rack or you can go custom. I would say go custom if, if, if you're just not feeling the off the rack strings, 
it's not, again, a big price difference between these two uh, when you take the shipping out of uh, the equation. So you might want to take a look at that, do a little experimentation, uh, find out what the difference is between a hex and a round core and whether that makes a difference. For example, uh, these are a round core on this one, round wound, and these are hex wound. So you might want to look into that and see if that uh, will play a part. I'm not going to do the homework for you. I think uh, as any good teacher, I think that you should go out and experiment on your own because again, this is subjective. If you want to save yourself time, like I had to do when I was a teenager growing up, buying several packs and mixing them up in order to get what I can achieve here with this just by a few clicks on the internet and ordering from, if you know what you want, what you're looking for. And even if you don't, experiment with a couple of these. These are fantastic uh, strings that these guys make. They're one of a kind. And they have a beautiful quality to them that I don't find on off the shelf uh, strings. So that's why I've been using these for a decade. So those are my thoughts on strings. I think that uh, really, you know, uh, it's up to you. It's subjective again, but you want to start with the finest quality strings that you can get. Sometimes that's going to be custom. Sometimes that's off the rack. Uh, you can uh, check into that, what you think is good. Uh, the other part of it is really having a handle on what works for your playing style, for your music style. Uh, what's comfortable for you and can you take that set and put it on any of your guitars and it still works just as good, just as comfortable uh, as the previous uh, guitar that had the same set on it. I think that's a real high benchmark to, uh, to achieve in order to give you a gauge on how good the gauge of string that you're using is. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> anyway guys, uh, that's my thoughts on electric guitar strings. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch today. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please uh, take the time to hit the uh, subscription button down below. Uh, if you like today's show, uh, I'd like to hear from you. So in the comments section, let's hear your voice ring out. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. It helps in the YouTube algorithm. And until the next one, you guys take care. Bye-bye.